From the Rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Elevated banners representing eight national championships, 48 SEC championships, and 31 SEC tournament titles decorate the overhead beams in Rupp Arena and highlight the unparalleled success of the University of Kentucky basketball program. Hello everybody, I'm Kyle Macy, and welcome to another episode of From the Rafters of Rupp. To have your jersey hanging with those championship banners in Rupp is the ultimate when it comes to Kentucky basketball lore. Throughout this series, we'll continue to feature members of this exclusive group as they share with us a first-hand account of why their jerseys hang from the rafters of Rupp. Today we visit with one of Kentucky's most resourceful and versatile performers, John Pelfrey. At six foot seven, John had the ability to score in the paint as well as beyond the arc and tallied over 1,200 points during his Wildcat career. John possessed tremendous court awareness and was a fantastic passer, and yet perhaps his greatest basketball gift has always been his outstanding leadership qualities both on and off the court. I recently discussed with John what it was like for him growing up in Paintsville, Kentucky. Well, I had a great childhood. Uh, growing up in Paintsville was, um, it was really kind of awesome. Uh, my dad coached me in Little League and he coached me in basketball and we had uh, bitty basketball things on Saturday and we were just always in a gym, always playing. You could be from one end of the city to the other in five minutes. And, and um, you know, if a pickup game broke out of the gym, I'll be there, you know. If you wanna go play golf, I'll be there. You know, you wanna go something big? Sure, like, there was no planning. It was just wake up and, and, and go. So uh, I was very, very fortunate. John Leslie Pelfrey is the oldest of three children. Along with his brother, Jerry, and his sister, Jackie, the Pelfrey family grew up in a loving home guided by career educators. Yes, my mom was a school teacher there at Paintsville. My dad at the time was, when we moved back to Paintsville, he was in the coal industry. He was a health and safety director. But when I got into high school, dad went back into education and he actually taught school at Lawrence County, which was 20 plus miles or so up the road uh, on 64. So he drove every day to work there. But um, for all intents and purposes, uh, both my parents were school teachers. Paintsville High School is one of the most tradition-rich sports programs in all of Eastern Kentucky. While John was at Paintsville, the Tigers captured three district championships, three 15th region titles, and made one Final Four appearance in Rupp Arena in March of 1987. And we got, you know, we got to the semifinals once that morning, and Alan Houston and Scotty Davenport broke our heart. You know. That's one of the most challenging days. I've got a few challenging days. That was one of the most challenging days heading home. I, I can never forget my dad saying, you know, the mountains never look so sad. And he was right. It was painful going back home. After his senior season, Pelfer was named Kentucky's Mr. Basketball. Scholarship offers poured in from a number of schools, including Marshall, Alabama, and Louisville. He was close to accepting a scholarship offer from CM Newton at Vanderbilt when late one night, John received an unexpected phone call. The phone rang, and it was James Dickey, which is a coach of Kentucky. And um, he said, hey, listen, you know, you have gotten better. You, uh, we want you to come down and talk to us. I think Coach Sutton wants to offer you a scholarship. Well, any time the phone rang past a certain time, like my parents were always trying to, like, get on the phone and kind of listen if I would talk to my girlfriend too late or, you know, whatever it was. So I knew my dad was on the other end of the line. And sure enough, when I hang up the phone, I can hear him getting out of bed, he's walking over here, he stands at the top of the stairwell, yells downstairs, John, yes, Dad, what are you gonna do about this? And I said, well, just let me go down there. Let me drive down and sit in front of him and tell him no. That's what I wanna do, I wanna tell him no. I wanna go to Vanderbilt. I'll never forget, um, you know, getting back home, after I've got my uh, off from Kentucky and, and uh, I visited Louisville and, 
and just kind of the stuff's going on, right? And my dad's like, had enough. He said, that's it, you're making a decision right now, where are you going to school? I'm like, why? He says, enough, I am tired of all this, we're putting a stop to this. So my mom never said a word. And I said, well, I'm gonna go to Kentucky. If I fail, I'm gonna fail at the best place in the country and I can live it, but I'm gonna go try. And my dad said, fine, it's done. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with John Pelfrey after these words from our sponsors. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. John signed with Kentucky and became part of a talented recruiting class of seven individuals who were all recognized as high school All-Americans. John understood the road to earning playing time at Kentucky would not be easy. There was this feeling like I was the seventh man signed and seven man recruiting class. I was a 15th gallon team. Right? You, now you got 30, I was, I was dead last. So it was me, Darren, Sean, uh, oh, how about these other two guys that were there? Uh, Sean Woods and Sean Kemp. Yeah, so those guys were in the building too. So I mean, we were loaded. I mean, when I first went there, it was Kentucky basketball, right? We were number one in the country for 10 straight weeks. Um, that team had Rex Chapman, Eddie Davider, Rob Locke, Cedric Jenkins, Winston Bennett, uh, Richard Madison. The decision was made for Pelfrey to redshirt his first year at UK. It turned out to be a great learning experience for John. I got to travel. I was I dressed out every single game. Um, I've always been very appreciative of Coach Sutton. Doing it. I got to see arenas. I got to feel what it was like in there. I got to watch Rex Chapman and these guys play in these environments and to see how they handled situations and what it was like for a Kentucky team to go on the road because they're all sellouts. Um, you're getting everybody's best shot. So I thought that was really invaluable for me that year. In the fall of 1988, Pelfrey entered his freshman year of eligibility at Kentucky. What started as a dream come true quickly turned out to be one of John's most challenging seasons as a basketball player. I ended up getting hurt. I had a stress fracture. Uh, I missed 13 games. Um, that's also the year where probation was about to hit and all that all came out. And, you know, it was such a challenging time. It's hard to be a Kentucky basketball player. It's, there's nothing easy about it. Um, there's a lot of things that are, are fun. I mean, the competition and uh, the ability to have a chance to go and win every single game you play in, and coaching and the fan base, and just the love affair you can have with your own water. But back then, you had to deal with the media every single day. And even if you're not one of the guys, so to speak, you're going to find your way in front of a camera because they can't talk to all those guys, right? So. Um, that was hard with probation coming down on her head and having to answer questions. The Cats suffered through the first losing season at Kentucky in over 60 years. Coach Eddie Sutton was fired. One of college basketball's proudest blue blood programs was slapped with NCAA sanctions and placed on a two-year postseason ban. As many players left the program, John recalls athletic director C.M. Newton stepping in to calm the stormy waters. Now he's with us, and I'll never forget Darren saying, Coach, it's hard to say no to Kentucky. And, and Darren literally said that to him. And so now we're kind of all back together. There's not very many people in the room, you know, because a lot of the guys have made decisions to leave. Um, and, you know, he promises. He was had his manner, his grace, his glory, his uh, mannerisms of comfort and security, and just all the reasons why I loved him. Uh, as a coach and a leader, it was now on our side. And we felt like we had somebody of stability that was gonna right the ship. Yeah, maybe the waves may be a little tough. Um, there may be a storm falling, but the forecast has all of a sudden changed that better days are, hey, we got a captain that's gonna lead us out of this thing. And he really did that for us. When CM Newton hired Rick Patino to take over the coaching duties at the University of Kentucky in May of 1989, the Cats' official roster had already dwindled to eight players. We talked about Coach Patino's first meeting with the guys that remained. He said, guys, I'll promise you this. He had his nice white dress shirt on and had his 
had his initials, his, you know, you could tell it was a custom made shirt and this guy's an Italian New Yorker and he's probably connected and you know, and he's like, I'll promise you it's gonna be the best experience you've ever had in your entire life playing basketball. But it's gonna be the hardest you've ever worked. And boy was he right. It was the best experience we ever had playing basketball. And it was the hardest thing we've ever done. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. During the first season at our new head coach, Rick Bettino, Kentucky proved the gloom and doom pundits wrong and clawed their way to a respectable 14 and 14 record. The Cats protected their home turf, not losing a single game in Rupp Arena the entire season. John recalls the level of play and support of the Wildcat faithful during a late season matchup in Lexington against the top 10 team from LSU. Obviously a legendary coach and Coach Brown. Um, they had Stanley Roberts, Shaquille O'Neal, Chris Jackson, Wayne Sims. I mean, it was just, they were loaded. You know, these moments were the ones I was talking about where our building, our fans took us to another level. They were invested, they were cheering, they were, it, it wasn't come entertain me, it was let us help you. And thank goodness, we got to ball to Richie, it was in his hands, and I think he made six straight free throws to seal the game for us. Uh, but there was some serious pressure, some serious heat trying to close that game out. Lofty expectations returned to the UK program for the start of the 1990-91 season. John remembers the immediate impact of one highly regarded recruit out of New York City. His name, Jamal Mashburn. Like he could come in and, and you know, been arrogant and, and um, made the whole thing about him and, and rightfully so. I mean, the man was a great player, a lottery pick and all those types of things. But he just wasn't him. Quite honestly, we probably wouldn't have had the, the results had he done that. Um, but he single-handedly changed everything. Besides Coach Patino, Jamal changed the whole landscape. Um, he, we went from like stopping the bleeding with 14 to 14, you know, got a tourniquet on, we're not gonna bleed to death. This guy made us relevant again because of his talent. In his junior season, Pelfrey led Kentucky in scoring with a 14.3 point per game average and was selected to the all SEC team. The Cats, while serving the last year of the NCAA probation, finished the season with a 22 and six mark. Kentucky beat in-state rival Louisville, seized revenge with a big win over Kansas in Rupp Arena, and although not officially recognized, the Cats compiled the best record in the conference and celebrated with the Big Blue Nation as SEC champions. And it was uh, Coach Newton was all responsible for that, and there was a, he bought us rings that were back on top, um, you know, on campus because of the rankings all season long in a paper or whatever publication would be put out. You know, it had the SEC standings, and even though they had us at the top with the best record, there was an asterisk by it because it down at the bottom it says can't ever see a championship because on probation or whatever. So there were t-shirts on campus that said kiss our asterisk. And so everybody kind of got behind the team. And um, when we, we, we won the league, it was a real deal. It was celebrated. And um, uh, we had a, a real live ticker tape parade through downtown. And so we're on fire engines and people are, it was, it was a great, cool experience. Entering the 91-92 season, the Cats were once again eligible to compete in postseason play. John talked about the commitment and focus the entire team shared going into his senior season. I think we were all excited, you know, and Coach Patino just like, we were so bought into him that, um, you know, where are we going next? What, what, what's the next step for us, you know? And um, Jamal was going to be older and, and um, we had the core and the nucleus of our team back, and, and the reality is it's okay to plan, it's okay to have a vision, it's okay to have a thought or whatever the case may be, but that can't consume you on a daily basis. And Coach Patino had a great ability to, to keep us in the moment. This group, tabbed as the Unforgettables, were relentless in their style of play and endeared themselves to Wildcat fans throughout the Commonwealth. After capturing the SEC East crown, 
The Cats rolled through SEC tournament play and crushed Alabama 80-54 in the tournament finals. Kentucky defeated Old Dominion 88-69 in the first round of the NCAA tournament in Worcester, Massachusetts. Then, in a high-scoring affair, dropped Iowa State 106-98. Played Johnny Orr and Fred Hoiberg and Lauren Meyer. Iowa State was an offensive machine. Yes, but we got through them too. We played really, really well. But that basketball team just had a mindset like, we're not going home. But they just, you know, okay, who's it today? We got this. Who's it today? We got, like, whatever's in front of us, we were going to mow it down. The Cats moved on to the regional semifinals where they met John Calipari and his UMass Minutemen in the Sweet 16 matchup. They were really good. They were a lot like us to a certain degree. They just had some guys and they just played really good basketball together. But we knifed them up under four minutes. We were scoring at an alarming rate. I know Cal wants to point to the technical foul. He got called on him by Jimmy Burr. But um, they were having a hard time stopping us. The Cats executed their game plan and claimed an 87-77 victory over UMass. The win set the Cats up for a regional final showdown with the defending national champs and the number one team in the country, the Duke Blue Devils. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with John Pelfrey after these words from our sponsors. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. In one of college basketball's greatest games ever played, Kentucky and Duke battled for 40 minutes in a classic back and forth matchup that held a coveted trip to the Final Four for the winner. Regulation ended with the score tied at 93, and John picks up the action with Duke leading 102 to 101 in overtime. Uh, it was just amazing how guys just kept going for it. Going for it, down one, that's fine. Down, up one, that's okay. Down one, you know, it was just like, it was just boom, boom, boom. Um, but when Sean made his shot, uh, I was so happy for him. And if you see the footage, my hands literally go above my head. My first thought was, I'm so happy for him that he made this shot. Sean Wood's bank shot in the lane gave Kentucky a 103-102 lead with 2.1 seconds remaining on the game clock. Grant Hill had the ball. Uh, I was the safety. I was just on inside a half court. I think Darren had Leitner. Um, so he was basically double teamed. I was in front, Darren was in back. Uh, I back up and see the plan is today. The ball's curving and I'm gonna catch the ball. It's gonna be over with. So I get back there and I tried to jump. And at that moment in time, I'm like, I thought I had my hands on the ball. Obviously the rest is history. He makes his little move. Where's the horn? Why isn't it going off? And then once he got it off, he's like, oh no. You know, and then the ball, the first thing he hit was the floor. I didn't even think the net moved. It was a, it was pure as thing you've ever seen. And we're like, what just happened? The 104-103 overtime loss to Duke remains one of the Kentucky program's most heartbreaking losses. It ended my career. It was incredibly painful. I hadn't prepared for it to be over and something that's such a part of your life and the journey wasn't complete. This was not where it was supposed to end. We didn't care that it was Duke. We didn't care they were defending champions. We didn't care that it was Coach K. It didn't matter. They were, it was, we had some place to go and somehow, some way it was gonna work out where we would overcome this challenge too. And so I think the, the, the positive thing that came out of the game, uh, even though we lost, we had earned a lot of respect, not just from the game, but nationally. And um, that probably, we've come to realize, you know, that's what you really want. Yeah. You really want to be respected. After graduating from Kentucky, John Pelfrey continued his involvement with basketball by turning his attention to the coaching ranks. Pelfrey was hired as an assistant coach on the staff of his former college coach, Eddie Sutton, at Oklahoma State University. In his first experience as a head coach, John led the South Alabama Jaguars to two postseason tournament appearances. In 2007, John was named the head coach at the University of Arkansas, where he guided the Razorbacks to the second round of the NCAA tournament in his first season. From there, he returned to Florida with Billy Donovan in 2011, 
then spent time on the staff at Alabama with Avery Johnson and is currently the head coach at Tennessee Tech University. Uh, my wife Tracy's still with me. That's that's an amazing. <laughs> that's an amazing feat. Uh, no, she's doing great. Um, we have two kids. But Jackson's a manager for us. He helps out in the office. It's it's free labor for me. And uh, then Grace is a part of the the women's team here. She's a, a 19 year old sophomore. She'll be 20 here in December. Um, so we're very excited for the opportunity to have to have a chance to watch her play. Obviously, Tracy has made my dreams and goals her dreams and goals. And my coaching um, profession, you know, because of some of the things that we've been through, you know, whether it's at Arkansas, whether it's at Florida, whether it's Alabama, where the case may be, by then choosing to come here, that's very humbling to have your kids feel that way. So it's, it's, uh, it'll make you emotional. John and I finished our conversation reflecting back on his time as a Kentucky Wildcat and what that experience has meant to him throughout his lifetime. I think for a guy that was um, just completely humbled in all the of, of the opportunity, who tried to take advantage of the moment, who was always appreciative and loved every second of it. I could have played games at Kentucky forever. I would not have wanted to go to school forever, but I would love to have played games forever at Kentucky. I'm just thankful for my parents, I'm just thankful for my coaches, I'm thankful for my teammates that I think we were able to be champions in our circumstances. You know, that doesn't mean we win every single game, but I really believe at the end of the day, we all got better and we moved closer to reaching our potential than we did anything else. John Pelfrey has enjoyed an extraordinary basketball career, both as a player and as a coach. He was named the 1987 Kentucky's Mr. Basketball. He fulfilled a childhood dream when he signed with the University of Kentucky. John's talents earned him all ACC honors and he was named to the 1992 SEC All-Tournament Squad. His 1,257 points scored at Kentucky more than secured him a spot in the Wildcats' prestigious 1,000-point club. He was inducted into the University of Kentucky Hall of Fame in 2005. John has continued to build upon his basketball legacy with successful coaching stops in Florida, South Alabama, Arkansas, the University of Alabama, and is currently the head basketball coach at Tennessee Tech University. For all Kentucky fans, John Pelfrey is unforgettable, and his number 34 jersey will forever hang in the Howell Drafters of Rupp Arena. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and hope to see you next time when we'll hear more tales from the Rafters of Rupp. From the Rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.